All right, good afternoon, guys. Uh, hoping you guys all loaded up with co uh, caffeine. Hopefully nobody falls asleep. It's that difficult time. So hopefully the intent here is to show you guys what we have done from a PayPal perspective. And the intent here is to actually show our learnings and hopefully learn from the experiences that the rest of the community slash th that the foundation is actually helping coordinate. Uh, I think we've actually done fairly interesting stuff. Some things we actually found out after we actually fell five times. Hopefully you don't have to fall five times. That's the intent. Some of the stuff we'll actually try showing as much details. There's gonna be some details we're not gonna be, get, uh, we're not gonna be able to cover here, but hopefully you know, after online, maybe over drinks or something, we can definitely talk. We actually have a member of the extended team here, so we can actually get down into the fairly detailed level. So first off, about PayPal, hopefully all of you guys have heard of PayPal, but just wanted to give you a little bit from a business perspective. We have 123 million users. We have $300,000 of payment that actually get processed every minute. We are in 190 markets, 25 currencies, and PayPal is the world's most widely used digital wallet. That's the business we are in. So moving forward, where did we start? Some of you guys who actually have been in operations can actually maybe relate to this. Not everything is cloudified. The day-to-day -day stuff is painful. So I wanted to at least just put down what some of our own experience was, and some of this is actually dirty laundry, but we wanted to at least share the dirty laundry. For us to launch a small service that my team was actually trying to deploy, it took us a lot of tickets, took us a lot of meetings, and we also had different design documents. And the goal here is it's not like the teams were not trying to do the right thing. They all had different work that they were trying to do. And they're just saying, you know what, I'll get to it, just submit a ticket. And different teams were actually siloed. So they all wanted to get the stuff done. Sometimes you gave all of the information to one team and the other team didn't have it. So this is our own internal stuff that we were finding out. And it actually, we actually got a little bit of a sense of what our development team was going through. Because they were giving information, some of them like, hey, I didn't get it, give it to me again. Or this is not right, that's not right. So this is the world that we were living in from a day-to-day -day perspective. And I think some of you guys who are actually in supporting either the major sites or your day-to-day -day work from an infrastructure engineering perspective, I think you guys can maybe relate to that, maybe not, but this was our story. So now, talking to our development teams, because they are under pressure to say, we want to launch something quick. There are three things our developers want all of the time, because this is the business expectations. The three most important things to them were agility, agility, and agility. And they're like, guess what? But we want it at scale without compromising availability. So this is what they wanted. They're like, guys, I know my code is ready. I want to be able to go here. I want to be able to do some sort of a CI CD, some sort of a gate. I want to go to QA. From there on, there's another gate. I go to pre-live. And I'm in live. Why does it actually take for you to do this basic stuff, and I actually have to submit so many tickets because I need to actually get to launch my product, that's what business is asking me for. The reason there are so many different challenges from our perspective is our QA slash our stages environment were a lot different than production. Some of the things that actually worked in QA slash our dev environment did not work because we had different configs our firewall was different. Our environment was different. Our network topologies were different. So our developer were actually going through a lot of pain. And sometimes they're like, guys, we just want to test something. It might or it might not work. But we just want to be able to roll it rather than waiting for a long time. Um, again, 
you know, I think we actually talk quite a bit about DevOps, you know, DevOps, but I think end of the day, there are some real challenges. They just want to launch something in production, and from an operations perspective, we actually say you actually have to go through this block, that block, and their thing is like, guess what? Automate it. I don't want to be able to deal through that. Underneath it, we can call PaaS, we can call IS, we can call OpenStack. I don't think it actually matters to them. They want to actually deliver something to production. This is not real. This is our aspirations. So from here on, we are like, OK, we know what we want to do. But before we actually started building something, we wanted to at least have a concept of what our guiding principles were. A lot of different teams, even internally within Inc., a lot of different teams were doing different things, some really interesting. But we are like, let us start. Because we are starting from a new approach, let us come up with some of the guiding principles that we can talk about. So we said we want to actually adopt open source solutions wherever possible. And I don't think open source means bad quality. I think some people actually have that concept. I actually truly believe it's the opposite. Other thing is we did not want to actually have any vendor lock-in. That does not mean we don't work with any vendors. We actually work with a lot of vendors. The only thing is we want to be able to have an abstraction layer that the entire industry supports. They know what are the APIs, and we don't actually have to explain something to somebody. So that was the concept there. Uh, of course, industry best practices, you know, and also leverage industry and eBay Inc. We had a lot of different engineering teams from our marketplaces team, from our ex-commerce team, that are actually all trying to start thinking about, OK, you know, does OpenStack make sense? So, uh, and our goal was, hey, whatever we want to do, let's just make sure we can at least all leverage to one internal open source model wherever we can. Functionality, we actually said, OK, we want to be thinking from a developer's perspective. And that's the concept we actually talk about, self-service tool for application lifecycle management. Some people call it PaaS. Some people call it something different. But from our perspective, we are saying, what is our development team looking for? And what can we think from their perspective from the get go? The other thing is just making sure uh, we do have some automation and orchestration existing at the time that we actually started. But it actually all started with one team, and it actually ended in their team. So systems team actually had an amazing tool. Networking tool had no idea. It didn't know how to talk to each other. So what we are really going after is we wanted an operating system for our entire infrastructure. That's what we were at least thinking about to say that is the level of agility. Because end of the day, from a developer's perspective, they are looking for a compute, storage, and any other infrastructure that comes so they can deploy their service. They don't care about, hey, my network ticket is done, my systems ticket is not done. That is an internal complexity we actually need it to get over. The third one was, from our aspect, is sometimes there's a huge demand for a certain service. We want it to be able to fulfill that service in a matter of clicks, rather than going through multiple teams and the amount of time it was going to take for us to fulfill that service. And we are in a place where sometimes some things don't pan out. Sometimes some things grow huge. So this was something our on-demand capacity fulfillment. Maybe it's a marketing buzzword, but we're like, you know what, we'll use it. So these are the basic guiding principles that we were going after. So based on these guiding principles, this is what we came up with. That's the reason we picked OpenStack. We picked OpenStack based on our guiding principles. And we also thought. At that point, we didn't know whether it's actually going to gain significant momentum or not. That was a secondary thing for us. The primary thing was it worked for us because it actually met with the guiding principles that we had come up with that was unique to our business challenges and to the business things that we were getting paid to satisfy. So here, what our goal here was that we're going to have a common infrastructure as a service 
that is going to be completely identical in our stages slash where we test our code, our M&A. When we actually potentially buy companies, they don't actually have to worry about it. It's going to be the same thing for production. And underneath it, right, it's going to provide some of the common things, which is compute, storage, network, load balancer, firewalls, DNS, basically the things that you need for you to construct an infrastructure layer that you can roll your code onto. So that's where we thought OpenStack was actually going to help us. And then on top of that, we are like OpenStack is a foundation for us a common and consistent foundation where we can expose our APIs. But on top of that, we actually gonna have another abstraction layer. And then on top of that are our business units. So we actually have different business units. So they all can come in and they can consume our infrastructure in a one consistent manner. And the key thing was OpenStack met with our guiding principles. And that's the reason we actually picked. So just expanding a little bit onto that, this is primarily what we wanted, what our product development teams, that they were actually screaming at us. They're like, guys, it's actually great. You can actually have whatever complicated infrastructure that you want. Basically, if I have an idea, I want to be able to go, want to be able to change my code that I'm actually fairly intimate with, I want to be able to deploy it, and I'm done. Underneath it, all of the complexity, what you're actually telling me, I can't do this because it, it is related to compliance, it's related to security, I didn't put this ticket right, I didn't put that ticket right, they're like, we get it, but that is something for you to manage. These are the things that we care about, and those things we actually did is, that is the feedback once we actually spoke to several teams. That's what we got from them. So that's what we are like, okay, we get it. We actually picked a IS platform and we know the things that you want to do. We're not going to be able to do everything. They're like, you know what? No, 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 no. Whatever our life, if you can make it a little better, we'll take it. If you can get actually infrastructure on demand, it'll actually be an amazing accomplishment for us. So that's how, but at least those are some of the things that we are actually thinking from, from our North Star perspective. OpenStack is a beginning. It's the journey we are on. If somebody asks me, you know, when, when are you going to be done? Hopefully never, because we want to actually make things better. Our goal, when we actually talked about going from developer desktop to production, you know, we actually said an hour. But now, as things are actually coming on, some of our actually executives are actually saying, is an hour too long? And we're like, we're not even there yet. But the goal is people are realizing the value of it. What are the things we can do? So the engineers are actually really excited about OpenStack. So we're like, all right. So this is some of our technology stack that we have. Uh, nothing fancy, to be honest fairly generic what we actually have for rest of the OpenStack that we actually have running. Uh, basically, we actually have our operations portal. We also have our PD development portal. Our operations portal is primarily geared towards our cloud administrators slash our infrastructure engineering folks. Our PD deployment portal, that's where we want our PD counterparts to actually come in and manipulate things. We do not want to give them access to the IS APIs directly. We just wanted to at least have some sort of a, and all of those, both of those orchestration is actually done by heat. And the other things that we actually have listed here, the only thing that we actually did was PayPal specific, was actually related to load balancer as a service, DNS as a service, and then firewall as a service. Those are the things that we did. Rest of the stuff, you know, basically from a hardware perspective, x86 compute, storage, network, load balancer. But the key was our APIs up top. And that's when we could actually tell our vendors to say, you know what, you want to come play with us? Great, help us. Because when we are actually managing the infrastructure at our scale, 
we want to be able to have common tools, common APIs, which are open, that we are, we are not the only one. It's actually the rest of the, your customers that are actually all saying the same thing. So this is our basic stuff that we've actually done. Uh, also, the other thing is related to load balancer as a service, DNS as a service. Um, our, our counterparts on the marketplaces side, they had actually done it. So we're like, guess what? If you actually done it, we want to copy it. Because our goal was not to reinvent something. Our goal was to put these things together and see, does it make sense from the business perspective and the business value that we are actually trying to provide to our engineering partners on the product development side. Um, it actually took us a little bit of a time. You know, we, uh, what I'll do is I'll actually talk a little bit about this step right here. So from idea to reality, it actually took us approximately six weeks. We had two engineers that are working on it. We picked two specific applications, not the entire applications. We wanted to actually have a fairly narrow use case that we could go from top to bottom that we can at least just validate to say, OK, for these type of applications, can we do it? It seems like all of the initial investigations that the team had done seems like it was actually possible. Some people were also saying, you know what, it works because I ran it on my laptop. Common thing that we actually hear from the engineers, but you're like, OK, we wanted to just make sure it runs at the scale we want. Also, there's an internal joke. We actually have one of our architects. He says everything is running because I actually have it running on my laptop. And he's like, when are you going to actually have Grizzly installed in production? Because I have it running it in my laptop. So, uh, so what we wanted to do is we are like, OK, let's just put our milestones together. And these are our actual sprints that we did. We started, and that's when we ended. And some of the things, I was able to take some of the things out but basically, this is the same stuff that we actually even use internally. Um, I think if you can at least just look at it, it's actually fairly basic stuff. We actually started out in our lab, wanted to make sure we don't blow up anything. Uh, we actually had a DNS as a service from our marketplace counterparts. We actually copied that. And we actually copied with pride. We were like, you know what, they developed it. Why should we waste our time? <coughs> Uh, there are some specific use cases we could modify on it because it's part of the Inc. family. Other one was just making sure we actually have the portal set up, load balancer as a service, lab set up. The pool view is just our internal application. Just from a high level, and we were able to provision, but those are just the three sprints. And on fourth sprint, we were actually fairly comfortable because we were actually doing this. And in fourth sprint, we were not doing this in lab. We were actually doing this in an isolated instance in production for two specific applications. That was our key thing. We did not want to say we are going to do this for our entire stack. I think if some of you guys, if you actually come from a running website or a running product, We've been running for the last 10 years. There are some things that you cannot run because there's so many skeletons in the closet. That's the reason we wanted to at least just pick two applications. And these two applications were where we actually got the feedback from our application teams to say, guys, this is our pattern slash our container for future. So that's the reason we actually picked those applications just for us to ensure anything knew that we are actually building from an agility perspective because our business and our product and our landscape, it was actually changing so rapidly what it was actually acceptable that it actually took two or three months. They actually want it to be done in 15 to 30 minutes. And the reason for that is that's where the industry was already there. The developers could actually go somewhere if they actually had a working code 
they could launch something in production, and their question to us is, why can't I do it? They're like, I want to do it internally, but these are my expectations. So that's the reason we wanted to stay fairly focused. So this was our concept, uh, fairly straightforward. We actually learned a lot of things. It was actually a fairly, fairly aggressive schedule. And the reason it was actually aggressive schedule is we just wanted to at least make sure we could do it. And if we failed, we wanted to fail fast. That was actually another, uh, another feedback that the entire culture within the PayPal, they're like, you know what? We want you to take chances, but if you want to fail on something, fail fast. Learn from something. So that was the idea here. So all great stuff. But how do I actually go tell somebody to say to our business counterparts to say, we've actually done something phenomenal? And our SLA, where we had none before, we actually have a SLA of 1 to 15 nodes and less than or equal to 30 minutes and the rest of the stuff you can see. Before that, it would actually take three weeks if it was actually escalated because of different cumbersome processes, some other internal process challenges. And what are the things we did do? We were able to actually do our DNS bindings. We were able to do our load balancer provisioning. We were able to actually incorporate our existing production monitoring for those two specific applications. The stuff that we did not do, that we didn't think we actually were able to do in the time frame, was our firewall rules. When we actually spoke to our uh, team responsible for firewall, after we actually spoke to them, the lack of APIs for the device, we actually just said, you know what? It's not in. We are not going to do it. So, uh, and also the code deployment. Uh, the reason we actually did not do code deployment, we actually have a lot of our business policies that dictate when we want to deploy a certain bits. It might be related to sometimes a announcement or a product commitment to our external consumers. It might be related to some of the other dependencies that the other that that specific application is relying on. So there's a lot of that business logic. So we said, you know what, we're not going to be able to do that, but we could at least do all of the other things. So this is what we actually were ready in around October 13th time frame. And after that, uh, by st uh, end of Thanksgiving, we actually go into a, we actually go into a uh, internal little bit of a freeze just to make sure we are not making that many changes because of the heavy traffic. I think some, some of you guys who are actually maybe in retail, some of the other major companies don't make any huge changes during the Christmas time frame. That's our busy time frame. Some of our staff is off. So that was then. So now, we were actually fairly impressed. We did run into issues, but we were actually fairly impressed that we did not run into as many issues as we expected. And it also gave us a level of confidence that we were actually running OpenStack, the bits that we were not as comfortable with because we were not sure, but we were actually running it within our production environment and I think one of the engineers ran into a, uh, some issue, and there was a 45 minutes time frame for us to uh, make a change. He actually just put it on the, one of the uh, chat boards, and he actually got seven or eight different answers in 10 minutes. And that actually proved something to us to say there are actually a lot of smarter people outside our company, and they actually all have a passion on actually making this open source work and we were able to use it for our business benefit. And we are also finding some of the things how we are actually contributing back, either the use cases or anything else. So based on that, the level of confidence uh, in April timeframe, we actually have it deployed in our web tier. That's where a majority of our customer facing applications are. We are actually uh, rapidly expanding to our mid tier. That's where some of our business services are. And also in management tier, that's where we actually do majority of the infrastructure management of the different computes that we actually have in the enterprise. 
And we also have a fairly aggressive plans with milestones and dates that we're actually going to be expanding it to Devon QA and also our merger and acquisition. So if you remember our initial picture, we wanted to at least have a common IS layer or a common data center operating system that manipulates compute, storage, network. We were able to prove it in a fairly aggressive schedule of six weeks that gave us a level of confidence. And now the team is actually moving and actually making further investments to actually help our business with the agility that we are looking for. And the good thing is, it's not just those two engineers anymore. We actually have a little bit more help, so we can at least uh, move it at a fairly rapid speed. And this is just some of the, under the hood a little bit, what we are actually running on. Uh, basic setup, like any other major enterprise, we actually have it running on a commodity hardware. We actually have a high density rack with top of the rack switches. And internally, we also have two different fault zones from a network, uh, how they're wired to the network. So if actually something happens to one, we can easily migrate without impacting the services onto the other from managing our availability requirements. Because anytime a service is down, as you know, it's a big deal because we're actually losing money. It's actually a big thing. Everybody's on the bridge. So from a high availability perspective, very critical for us. We have a standard hardware profile across our development, our stages. We copied some of the things in the industry. We actually have a small, medium, large. I think one of the teams internally, they wanted to feel important, so they wanted an extra large profile. So we'll work with that. But the goal here is before, different business units wanted to actually say, I want this hardware. I want that type of network access or these type of requirements. Now we are at least just trying to say, hey, you know what? Industry has changed, as you're saying, but also the way we deliver service has changed. It goes into a common building blocks that we can actually repurpose. So for example, our aspiration is we can take QA and make it production and vice versa in a matter of minutes. Maybe initially it takes a couple days, but the building blocks are all the same. So we also have an engineer that actually is responsible for making sure he is talking to different PD uh, engineering teams to say what your needs are. And then he comes up with a profile to say, okay, we actually have a small for this application medium, and we're also trying to have a better documentation to say which application matches which compute needs. Uh, and other one is a actual picture. I think that engineer who I'm talking to has a lot of pictures. He definitely thinks uh, very fascinating stuff. So we wanted to put it here also just to show the stuff that we are talking about is something that we actually have. So at least we can learn what others in the foundation or in the OpenStack community are doing so we can learn some things. These are some of the technical challenges and lessons that we learn from our perspective. It does not mean it should apply to everybody. This just means these are the things that we actually have. Um, I'm not going to go through in details with all of them. Some of them were actually fairly simple, but we actually spent 12 to 18 hours. And then we actually find, found out what the root cause was it was actually fairly simple, but those are some of the pains that we had. One time we were actually running into an issue and we actually told the site services guys to reboot some nodes. They actually rebooted other nodes that were actually live in production and they came up as read only. It, actually, it was actually a big thing to say, you know, hey, OpenStack is not stable and we were actually all panicked. We were like, shit, yeah, it's not. Uh, we spent a lot of time, and then we actually started doing the analysis. We we're like, oh, okay, we shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, the amazing thing was our monitoring things did not pick that up. And those are some of the lessons, uh, not only from a technology perspective, there are also some of the process things that we actually had to make sure some of our processes were not going to scale 
when we are actually talking about manipulating and managing this many nodes, we are a defined software. Uh, some of the other things is also the, the uh, compute tuning, uh, also some of the other tuning. The good thing is we actually have a good ecosystem of our uh, partners and vendors that we were able to rely on. And this was, the good thing is all of these things that we are actually doing, we actually feel like that the dividends are tremendous because this is a pattern that we are creating. Before that, we actually had different complexities for different business units because they wanted a specific type of hardware. Somebody else wanted a different type of hardware. And guess what, the third guy is like, you know what, I want the same hardware as the other guy because it sounds cool. So we are actually trying to just eliminate all of that complexity to say, okay, based on your profile of the application and your application needs, we will publish and we will give you different compute nodes. So those are some of the things. I'm not gonna get into a lot of details. The other one is just a little bit on the cultural aspect. Some of you guys might, finding, might find a little bit insightful Sometimes the challenges are not related to technology. They're also related to cultural challenges. And sometimes those cultural challenges are actually a little bit challenging to overcome. So for example, the concept of agile, sometimes it does not translate completely into the way operations teams are set up. So it was actually a it was actually a big thing for us, and we also were gonna miss some deadlines if we had not realized that it is, it is a little bit of a cultural issue and we actually had to switch some things. We had to go talk to those teams and figure out, okay, forget about Agile. This is what we are trying to do. What can we do together? So very something for you guys to keep in mind is when you're actually taking a endeavor to change a technology, there's also a cultural aspect to it, and sometimes as a technologist, we forget that. And that was actually one thing that we actually realized it from our perspective. So this is all good stuff. You know, end of the day, from a business perspective, they're like, okay, are we on target? So yeah, we actually were on target. These are some of the things that we did to meet some of our production guidelines based on our challenges based on the things that we are trying to do. Uh, some of the things we actually did not change completely because we wanted to make sure that the existing monitoring that the various teams were used to, we just wanted to actually accommodate that. The other thing is uh, just making sure we actually had a central monitoring. Uh, we wanted to make sure we actually accommodate to the same pane of glass that rest of the team slash or knock team is looking for rather than say, no, no, don't look at that. So these are some of the things, and underneath the covers, we actually made some changes, but the goal here is we had so many different teams that are actually involved, for us, for us to do everything completely to the left side or completely to the right side were not gonna be feasible for us. So these are some of the things that uh, we did. For example, the cluster deployment, what we are doing is we are actually separating out our physical clusters from our perspective, just to make sure that, uh, just to make sure that if there's any issues, sometimes if it does impact, it's not gonna impact, we at least have some sort of a, even a physical isolation that we are doing. Um, other thing is, you know, Puppet modules for deployment, I think, you know, either Puppet, Chef, whatever works, uh, whatever works for anybody. The other internal things, we actually had a unique guest name naming across our data center, and that's where some of the monitoring and some of the other business logic relied on. You actually had to meet a certain sort of an internal guest naming policy that we had. Not a challenge if you're actually starting brand new, but these are some of the things that we had to account for. And these are the things, uh, if you're thinking about uh, deploying this in enterprise, some of the things you might wanna keep in mind because these are some of the things that we did not account for because we didn't really foresee this. The other thing just wanted to see from a, some of the highlight, highlights perspective, what have we been able to do to at least say, hey, this has been a 
challenging, but also some of the things we've actually done has actually given a level of confidence even to our business to say we're on the right track. And when I say business, this is just to our executive leadership team to say, you know, hey, in addition to some of the technical KPIs that we are actually monitoring, we're also paying attention to some of our other business level KPIs. Some of these things are actually related, as I actually mentioned before, not completely to technology. There are also some process improvements. For example, we actually looked across to say every quarter actually has a certain level of demand. And we worked with our capacity team. Um, and that's the one thing I could not say. Capacity team, you know, our NOC teams, all of these teams, they actually showed an amazing appetite to actually do this cultural change within PayPal. There are some things that they would not budge on, rightfully so, but it was actually amazing team effort and collaboration because we actually walked up to capacity team. We were like, you know what? We want to buy everything that we need for this quarter up front. And we're like, do you have this data? They're like, well, not completely. They're like, they actually asked us, why do you need it? We're like, our goal is to make sure we always have a cash that we can always give it to our business demands. So rather than actually spending a lot of money, they actually helped us give us a good financial guidance of the things that we're needing. So we did not have a unused inventory just sitting there forever, but also at the same time, we gave an illusion to our PD counterparts that every time that you come in, you're gonna have capacity available. So, so those are the other things just wanted to share. Some of the process improvements also. Uh, sometimes in an enterprise, sometimes some things become a status quo. It does not change year after year. So we actually eliminated some of the handoffs from a technology perspective, but we wanted to make sure that they were actually in sync and they were proposing the things that we wanted to do. But the end result was for certain application use cases, we were able to cut down on our infrastructure provisioning significantly. It was actually an amazing thing. And now the funny thing is even internally, everybody's like, you know, I want to move to OpenStack. But I'm like, well, there are some other process challenges. They're like, no, no, no I don't care. I want to move to OpenStack. So I think it's actually a good thing. But there are other work that we actually need to do because from an overall process perspective, there are a lot of other process things that we need to do. And that is the one thing, something for you guys to keep in mind is technology is something that can be solved with the right folks sitting together. But process is the other aspect where the relationship and the cultural aspect comes in. And you want to pay a close attention to that, because unless you pay close attention to that, your project completion or a successful project completion might be at a significant risk. Other things we actually have going on, uh, actually the network validation tool that we actually did was actually just internal to our application needs. What are some of the application connections that a certain application needs? So we can at least just do that validation. Other things in the smart, smarter CapEx buys, we actually talked about working with our capacity team and countless other teams that actually helped us. Uh, other things we actually have going on, we have SDN, uh, Software Defined Networking. We actually have that pilot going on. And we have a one-click application lifecycle management. Um, or in other words, we are thinking about what to do for PaaS. We actually started OpenStack was a foundation. If we did not have a foundation, we could not build something on top. And that's where some of the agility that some of our business and our PD counterparts are actually looking for. But we actually really needed this OpenStack. And I think it's actually a critical foundation for us. So those are some of the other things that we actually have going on. Um, our goal is actually to share a lot more. We want to be, and, and our intent is actually fairly selfish. We want to share, and we want to actually copy some things that you guys are doing. And if you're doing something that is of actually interest to you, we want to just make it available for you guys to take a look at it. So from that perspective, this is our commitment to community. I think the OpenStack Foundation has been an amazing partner with us. Uh, and these are the things that we are actually trying to do. And again, the things that we are trying to do is just to make it, make it available to share our data points for what it takes for one of the 
secure enterprises that's actually running a high available infrastructure, what are the lessons that we learned and what are the potential things for you guys to consider? We want to make sure that any of the changes, any of the tuning, either from a compute perspective, from a storage perspective, anything that we actually do, we want to make it available so you guys actually have the option of actually taking a look at it and using it if it makes sense. That's something we want to do. And any changes that we make, whether it's actually related to either puppet modules or anything else, we want to make it available for anybody to consume. And the goal here is to hopefully develop an ecosystem where users can actually look at things and actually help create an ecosystem that actually is flourished via users like us, vendors like you know some of you folks, and I think it's that ecosystem that we are trying to help flourish because we will gain selfishly from it and we want to actually contribute back also. Some of the architecture design and blueprints, you know, load balancer as a service, from our perspective, what we think are the high level use cases from a load balancer as a service. Firewall as a service, as you actually realized, we did not tackle that, but we are planning to tackle it. And hopefully by end of H1, we actually have that tackled. So those are the things, but our goal is, um, before that we've been a little bit not as good of actually sharing some of this, but hopefully our lesson moving forward is we actually wanna share more as we're actually accelerating in this journey and, and as we are building this muscle, we wanna learn from the rest of the community because majority of the brain power is actually outside of our company. Same thing, if there's some uh, leads and engineers that have actually helped us. We want to make it available for the rest of you guys. Same concept, learn. And anything that we are doing from a reference architecture perspective, working with our vendors, sharing that, and see if you guys can actually poke holes or make it better. And the other one, the last one, I think we put it there as a marketing thing, but we are not good at user community and foundation growth. I don't know what this means, but basically for us to just come out <laughs> and just talk about the things that we are doing. So that's in a sense is our journey and this is a team that actually made it happen and I'm just the one that's actually just speaking on their behalf but the real credit goes to the guys here. You know, some of them are actually not pictured. It's actually the entire broader organization that actually came together. We started in this journey. We actually proved it in six weeks. It actually gave us a lot of confidence and we are actually going, we are actually running. So. That's our story, just for us to share and then learn from you guys. So, cool. thanks. Yeah, hopefully you were able to actually see, and if you didn't see, maybe it was actually my, uh, we are trying to make a data center operating system agnostic of compute, storage, network, hypervisor. Our goal is to actually make a platform that enables agility, 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 without compromising our availability. Yeah. I'm sorry, come again? Yeah, yeah, hope, yeah. We actually, we should actually have that done. I was told either in this sprint or next sprint as part of Silometer, uh, as a way of actually doing a show back, if that's what your thing was. Uh, we've actually started, but we have not completed yet. Yeah. It, yeah, it's not really encryption as a service. It's basically just saying any of the uh, message queue that we actually have, any of those messages that we're actually sending are actually all encrypted. Nothing from an encryption as a service. Okay. Yep. Thank you. 
I think that's something we actually pay a significant attention to it. And as of now, we don't. But we actually have an active track where we actually always look at proactively, are there any things you know, that is going to be impactful to make sure that we are actually ahead of it. As of now, we don't see anything from our perspective. Yeah. Yeah, so our, our strategy there is we wanted to certify it on the platforms, the application platform of the future. Some of the application migration, there's a separate track as part of the application movement where everything net new will be built on this new platform. And everything else slash legacy either will die or in our case, sometimes it doesn't happen as gracefully. So it just stays on for a little longer than we would like. Yeah, so the specific numbers is, is something we actually don't share as, uh, as part of our policy. Uh, one thing I can definitely say is the numbers that we actually have is something that actually has given a meaningful insight on the overall OpenStack platform from a scalability perspective. Cool, thank you guys, I appreciate it. <laughs>